A lot of talk about Jared Goff. Potential, you know, starting quarterback for the Lions in 2023. A lot of talk about Dan Campbell, coach of the year. Analytics, fourth down decisions, plus also culture. My take is Brad Holmes should win executive of the year. And Howie Ooh. Roseman had himself a day in Philadelphia. And Howie Roseman's had himself a few days. Let's talk about the way Brad Holmes rebuilt this freaking Lions team, man. Do you remember what Bob Quinn left? Do you remember the shambles that this roster was in? And uh, you, you can't win it for your achievements for two years. But let's just remember how well this Jared Goff trade is working out for the Lions to the point where their offense is functional. They, they've had development at wide receiver. They've had proof of concept with office coordinator Ben Johnson. When you make the Matthew Stafford trade and you, oh, you kind of get Jared Goff back and I drafted him with the Rams, I know him. Obviously, you're, you're trading away a good quarterback for a not as good quarterback. Everybody knows, except for the people who are willingfully ignorant about it, i.e. nerds, Everybody knows that Stafford's better than Goff. But if you get a really bad quarterback back in that trade, you stunt your uh, opportunities for offensive development. The Rams didn't, or excuse me, the Lions didn't do that. They got Goff now only paying him $30 million per year because the the Rams took on a lot of his money, which is good value for a quarterback of of Goff's caliber, right? He's getting remarkably less than Cousins, remarkably less than Tannehill. And also executing the offense to the point where you can evaluate your wide receivers, evaluate your running backs. Let's talk about those players. Let's talk about Jamal Williams, two-year, $6 million deal in free agency last year. Jamal has become the lead back for them because DeAndre Swift hasn't panned out as much. Let's talk about the fact that in this past offseason, 2021 offseason, the Lions of Brad Holmes came under heavy fire for not signing a ton of free agents, for not going out and getting big market players. You know who the one player they got was? DJ Chark, one-year, $4 million deal. It's been a perfectly solid wide receiver for them on the outside. They re-signed Khalif Raymond, drafted Jamison Williams, all forward-facing moves. All we need is see what we can do at wide receiver long-term. We're not going to pot commit to anybody except for the fourth-round pick that I nailed in Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, yeah, fourth-round star receiver. Don't mind me, Brad Holmes, developing out my offense. Let's talk about defensively. Re-signing Tracy Walker, who was playing great football, got injured, and then third-round rookie Kirby Joseph steps in. And Kirby Joseph is playing lights out for the third-round rookie. Their other free agent, Deshaun Elliott, right, who knew Brian Brian Duker, the safeties coach. One year, I think it's, what, $4.5 million deal? Solid player for them. Let's talk about Malcolm Rodriguez working. Let's talk about uh, uh, James Houston, undrafted free agent rookie, stepping in and being a designated pass rusher. Brad Holmes killed this from step to CERN. Now, here's what's really important. Brad Holmes killed this with the intention of not pushing all the chips in, of waiting, of being patient. They did not sign big contracts. They, they signed one-year deals. Everybody, they re-signed everybody, they brought in one-year deal, two-year deal. They have a ton of expiring contracts in the next couple of years because they wanted to sit and see, all right, if by, by the end of 2022, do we really know if this is going to work? Independent of what happens with the Lions' 20% chance to make playoffs, independent of beating the Bills, or losing the Bills, and beating the Vikings, and all of this, proof of concept. I mean, like they, they're going to have to fight to not lose offensive coordinator Ben jo- uh, Johnson in, in, in the, uh, the head coaching cycle, fight not to lose defense coordinator Aaron Glenn in the head coaching cycle. They know that this nucleus works. Campbell, Johnson, and Glenn. Goff gives them a functional quarterback entering next season in the event that they don't like any of the rookies. And when you go and you read what Brad Holmes has said after the drafts, 2020, he said, yeah, if there was a quarterback we liked better than Penny Sewell, we would have drafted him. 2021, uh, that was 2021. 2022 draft, he said, yeah, the quarterbacks were properly rated. We, the quarterbacks went in the draft where we thought they would, right? We had Pickett the early, you know, like he implied we had Malik Willis round three, we had Desmond round three. He has had top 10 picks and not taking quarterbacks, which means if Brad Holmes looks at this, this rookie class and doesn't like C.J. Stroud too much, and thinks Bryce Young's too small, thinks Will Levis is too raw, they'll bring Jared Goff next year. They have proof of concept, but, but Holmes set up this year, this offseason, to be the fork in the road. He said, okay, we're, we're, we're going to get the guys in that we think are good. We're going to DJ Chark, one-year deal. We're going to Deshaun Elliott, one-year deal. We're going to see if we like what we got. And if we do, then we can shove these chips in. That's good team building. Now get quarterback right. Because you just did everything Chris Ballard did for two years. And then what happened? He couldn't finish it. Couldn't finish the job. And they have that Rams pick and they have the top five pick. So huge inflection point for Brad Holmes. Huge inflection point for the Detroit Lions. Independent of anything that happens next, this offseason could catapult them to the top of the NFC North or could totally submarine this whole thing. 
But right now, man, give me an executive of the year award. Let me hand it to Brad Holmes. There are so many flowers right now for Dan Campbell, for Ben Johnson, for Jared Goff. Brad freaking Holmes. Unbelievable. Perfectly executed two-year turnaround. Cherry on top comes this offseason the quarterback position. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'm on Ra and Jamison Williams. I mean, that for years to come is very Jerry fun. Jacobs, man. Uh, Je- Jeff Akuda goes down on this game. Yeah. He's still he's still banged up. Jerry Jacobs, undersized, undrafted free agent corner out of Arkansas. He's lights out. Inside out versatility. Mike Hughes. One year contract, Mike Hughes. He didn't he didn't miss step all offseason, man. Aiden Hutchinson had a series in that game against the Vikings that he took over. He had two big plays and ended a series mm-hmm. uh, against Minnesota. Dude, the, I, I, I forgot this was supposed to be my lead in point. It was going to be like a real kicker. So take me back to the beginning. This team traded away TJ Hawkinson. You remember that? This yeah. team traded away second round pick. They got a second round pick back for a tight end. This is a tight end that people are like, yeah, he's a top five, top 10 tight end. This is a legit receiving for a tight end. They didn't feel it. He, they, he traded away Hawkinson and the team didn't burp. That's bananas. The, the yeah. Make that move and then, it, and then it, the, the coach staff doesn't even sweat. That's, sh- it, that's incredible that work, man. That's so sick. Yeah, it's always hard to separate personnel from coaching. I mean, I look at it on paper and look at the pieces on offense and go, that is a like outstanding coaching job. I mean, I agree with pretty much everything uh, you said there. Just looking at those pieces on paper, if you would have told me coming into the season that they're, they're going to operate like a top eight offense, I would have gone no way. In fact, I'm sure wherever I ranked them before the season, you know, I think right. they were in the, I probably I think I had them around in the 20s uh, probably. So uh, yeah, he's done a good job and it leads right into my point, Ben, okay. about the Detroit Lions. Jared Goss playing really well. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But my, I think we've gone a little too far. If the Lions like a QB in this draft, they have to take him. I, I oh, you thought we were going to disagree? You thought I was going to well, back Jared Goff? You don't know I, me. We're not pals. I thought we were friends. <laughs> Well, I have heard talk that Jared Goff's going to be the guy next year and, you know, they don't need to. They can just upgrade the rest of the roster and go with Goff. And to me, that would be a listen. If you don't like the quarterbacks, that's one thing, like you said. But this is your chance. You are drafting right now. What is it? Number four overall. Oh, baby, that Rams pick is looking good. You are set to draft number four. That could go higher. We don't know which quarterbacks will be available right there. But like you said, you've built it. You've built all around that quarterback. You've been patient. At some t- at some point, you have to pull the trigger and find your guy. You want the guy who can elevate the offense, not be a function of the offense like Jared Goff. Again, he's playing well. His Statistically, he's been a top five. He's fifth in EPA per play. I mean, that is ridiculous. The Lions are seventh in offensive DVOA. Goff was dealing... Uh, against the Vikings. You always also might have noticed he had a lot of time back there. You also might have noticed the wide receivers were making plays. It's a very nice spot for a quarterback to be in. If you are the Lions, you are chasing sustained success. Do you know the last time they made the playoffs in back-to-back years? Were you even Caldwell. born? I have no idea when you were born. No. They do a call 90, now. They only did once. 94-95. Yeah, so I was born in 97. Oh my God. Get it. All right. End the podcast. Uh, Chris, end the podcast. I'm going solo. The rest of the. uh, (laughs) A couple (laughs) years ago, 97 was annoying. You got got guys making plays in NFL games who were born like 99. (laughs) All right. Brock Purdy's out here. Brock Purdy was born in 1999. I get mad at him. So, no, you want to chase sustained success. They haven't had it. I mean, if you're a Lions fan, you're going, we've never had this. We've been alive for a long time and we've never had this. They haven't gotten past the wild card round since 1991. And so they're in such a good position. It doesn't mean you have to bid farewell to Jared Goff. It means if, you know, if you sit there at four, if you get to three, let's just say for uh, hypothetically, you did your scouting on CJ Stroud, you like CJ Stroud. Either he can come in and play right away. He can sit a little bit. He can come in in the middle of the season. You have golf on a reasonable contract. Like you said, the offense works with him, but you have to make that move to find that guy who's going to be the elevator, who's going to put you in the mix year in and year out with the talent around them. And so they're so well positioned right now. And I hear some of the chatter. It probably applies a little bit, you know, to the Seahawks in Geno Smith. Honestly, it's a very similar uh, situation. In my opinion, you might disagree, but uh, I think you have to take the swing on the quarterback here if you're the Lions because also 
The roster's good. The team's pretty good. You're not going to be picking this high again anytime soon unless something yep. goes terribly wrong. And so you can't always be looking for the perfect guy. You can't always say, hey, we're going to wait for Caleb Williams. Third, you know, 25 teams are going to be waiting for Caleb Williams uh, next year. If you like a guy, you have to take him. You still have the 15th pick. And uh, I don't know. I guess I, I would maybe I'm I hope I'm not arguing a, a straw man here. I feel like I have heard a little buzz that they can just roll with golf next year, upgrade the roster and they're good there. They don't have to force quarterback. But uh, I feel like this is their chance to really pounce and set themselves up for the next five, six, seven, eight years. 